Hi, in this video we will learn about the marginal products of the translog production function. We know that the marginal products are undertaken by using the derivatives of the given production function. Here we have a translog production function, so we take its derivative, but it's not just an ordinary derivative, it is a logarithmic derivative. The reason is that the dependent and the independent variables, they are appearing in the form of their logarithms. As you can see, natural log of Q and natural log of labor and natural log of capital. So we take the logarithmic derivative and here you can see in the denominator it is delta natural log of labor and again in the denominator it will be delta of natural log of derivative. So here we have started to uh, calculate the derivative and you can see here on the right hand side as well that we have natural log in the denominator with respect to which we are calculating the marginal products. Before we go ahead, I just want to remind you to subscribe if you haven't and you may also like this video if you find it useful and don't forget to click the bell icon so that you get more up-to-date material regarding the quantitative economics. So now we take the derivative and once we take the derivative of the production function it becomes the marginal product and in this case it is marginal product of labor. Now the derivative of this term with respect to natural log of labor will be equal to zero but here we have natural log of labor so its derivative will be calculated here as well and this would again become zero because there is no natural log of labor in it this term do have natural log of labor in its square form so we can find out its derivative as well and this will become zero as well and this one will not become zero because it has natural log of labor and natural log of capital so uh, here uh, the natural log of capital will come out as a coefficient whereas natural log of labor will be treated as a value. Now it is very simple to calculate the derivatives of these terms. These two terms will be cancelled out. Here we will apply the power rule of differentiation. We can pause the video and see that how this power rule is applied. There isn't anything new except for the fact that the differentiation is logarithmic in nature as the dependent and independent variables are in their natural logarithmic form. Here, uh, this will reduce to 1 because they are same in the denominator and the numerator, the terms. Now, simplifying, we get the marginal product of labor, which is equal to this. Here, we can see that the marginal product of labor is uh, the function of natural log of labor itself, but also of natural log of capital as well. Similar is expected from the marginal product of capital. Here you can see the derivative is in its natural logarithmic form with respect to capital. This is the translog production function, the logarithmic derivative of which is taken with respect to capital. It will become marginal product of capital once we include this derivative. The terms with labor, uh, the terms with capital will have some effect. This term, that term, and finally this term. So when we take their derivatives, they will be respectively this, that, and then finally this term. Here the natural log of flavor is coming out as a coefficient, and natural log of capital is being treated as a constant. So similar to what we did above in this step, we are doing it with respect to natural log of capital here. You can pause the video and you can learn from the last step in MPMP. So finally we will get the MPK, which is equal to this. There's quite a bit of uh, harmony between these two or some sort of uh, symmetry because this is the parameter without any variable then we have two and then we have the um, other coefficient which is appearing with two of the subscript because they will a square and that square is now reduced to power one here they are appearing uh, as labor and capital as per MPL and MPK and here beta of the cross term is B L K and here it is the same. However, in this case there is labor, natural log of capital and here natural log of labor. This was just a pattern that we can note here. However, it doesn't have an economic interpretation. Here we can see that M P K, which is the marginal product of capital, is not only dependent upon natural log of capital, but also on the natural log of labor. Then we have optimal factor combination, that is this condition that we have been studying in every production function. So now we have the value of MPL, so we have substituted it here and we also have the value of MPK which is substituted here. So now we can rewrite it, usually we write it in the form where W or R is written. So we have converted it in this way that becomes W over R is equal to a certain value. 
So this would be the optimal factor combination condition for translog production function. So this is how we can understand the marginal product of uh, translog production function and using which we can also find the optimal factor combination for the translog production function. You may like it if you have found it useful. Thank you.